years so they became certified public accountant. Diyala Salipa, I graduated from Diyala Salipa. And law school, I also graduated from the law school of Diyala Salipa. I'm teaching in the in law school for almost four years. About review, I'm a CPA reviewer, but still I'm not practicing my profession as a CPA, as a lawyer, because I cannot balance the code of ethics of the two professions. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, CPA should uh, promote public interest while lawyers should promote the cause of their client. Unfortunately, I have hard time, so I decided to focus on academia. But probably, uh, after 10 years in academia, they will decide to go to government. But I love teaching. This is my first love. Hopefully, di ba, I will continue, but alam nyo na, pag may anak, may asawa na po kasi, may anak na, so sometimes offers cannot be resisted, <laughs> especially in the corporate world. But that's a problem. When you go to corporate world, you have to promote the cause of your client, even it is contrary to your principles, ideas, moral values. Because you go to a mining company, that mining company definitely will deteriorate the environment, but you are a lawyer, you have to promote the cost of the client, there's a loophole in the law, <coughs> and it's not your problem, you just have to apply the law, but at the end of the day, you are still part of the, the you are part of, or you are one of the reason for the deterioration of your of our environment, but of course, diba? our government will say, well, we need funds, Diba? We need money for our infrastructures, so we have to balance the interests of the environment and the economy. But of course, we are not in Congress, eh, diba? Kung, <laughs> diba? that's why sometimes I encourage my friends who are priests to you, you run in public office so that there will be balance. But unfortunately, diba? you have to, I do not know the process for, for, the, for that, but problem is you're only one of the members of the House of Representatives and it is democracy, majority rule. So even if you want to to contradict the decision of majority, at the end of the day it will be very difficult. Now let's go to non-profit organization. Now I, the normal characteristics of a non-profit organization of course it is intended normally for charity social works and normally those corporations like non-profit, non-stock non-profit educational institutions are well created for their particular mission vision, particularly their founders. <coughs> Example, a Sal school is initially created definitely for the poor, but diba? is it really a school for the poor? <coughs> diba? I've been in a Catholic school, in the Sal school, and I think only probably 5% are poor. 95% are rich, like Ateneo, USD. But, well, at the end of the day, the Board of Regents or Trustees will say that, well, if we will continue to, to focus on the poor, how can we manage our school? Uh, that's a problem. Now, the good thing with a non-profit organization is that non-profit organization under the constitutions are exempted from certain taxes. That's why you have to avail of these exemptions. Example, we have a non-stock, non-stock, non-profit educational institution. And also, let's include charitable institution, corporation souls such as Archdiocese of Manila, Archdiocese of Lipa, they are corporation souls, they are created by of course, by the issue once by SEC of Certificate of Registration. Actually, there's only one corporation which did not file articles of incorporation to the SEC, and that is the Roman Catholic Church, because according to the Supreme Court, it's a corporation by prescription since time immemorial, its personality has already been established. So there's no need to question the juridical personality. But when it comes to other religion, Archdiocese of Lipa, Archdiocese of Manila, Archdiocese of Dagupan, they find the Articles of Incorporation. And the sole uh, trustee is the Archbishop. That's why right? our corporation is called Corporation Soul because the Archbishop is the only trustee. 
but he is merely the owner of the naked title because the beneficial owner remains to be the members of that archdiocese. That's why he cannot sell it for private interest because he holds the properties, the cathedral, the building for the benefit of the faithful. But we are not co-owners. Meaning, if you want to go to other religion, you can ask, ask the archdiocese that, can I have the share of the land because I contributed 1% for that. No, you are not a co-owner. If you want to go to other religion, sorry, under the law, you cannot ask for your portion because that is owned by the archdiocese. Now, let's go to real property tax because this is the common problem when it comes to non-stock, non-profit, educational, and charitable. Under the Constitution, all lands, buildings, convents, appurtenance there to churches, parsonages, non-profit cemetery, actually, directly, and exclusively used for charity, charitable, educational, and religious purposes are exempted from taxation. Unfortunately for our Constitution, it requires a very strict elements, meaning it, the asset, the land, must be actually, directly, and exclusive use for charitable, religious, or educational purposes. Now, yung real property tax sa yung Amelia, and Amelia is normally paid before the city treasurer. Now, what's the problem? There's a one archdiocese, another school, the, example, the LSU Manila. We have a portion of the LSU Manila which is being leased to fast food chain. Now, here's the problem. <coughs> is that subject to real property tax? Yes. We have one case. Another one is, I will not say the archdiocese, but one portion of that church is being leased out to a particular uh, photocopy company or fast food chain. So the question is, is that subject to real property tax? Of course, yes. Because according to the Supreme Court, the requirement is that they must be actually, directly, and exclusively used for religious, charitable, or educational purposes. Although the arguments of this organization is that the rental income will be used for charity. But according to the Supreme Court, that is not the reason for it. The reason is the actual use for religion. And you did not use it exclusively for religious, you have to pay the real property tax. But fortunately, for this non-stock, non-profit, educational, or charitable, of course, the city treasurer will not do that. Diba? Normally. One hectare, for example, <coughs> and then 100 square, square meter, meter is being used for store. Okay. Uh, what uh, portion will uh, be subject to yes. yeah. Only the 100 square meter. Okay. In the case of St. Luke's, St. Luke's is a non-stock, non-profit, charitable. Can you imagine? St. Luke's non-stock, non-profit, charitable. According to the Supreme Court, that portion of the building, which is used for charity, exempted from real property tax. But those portion used for paying patients will be subject to real property tax. So those income used for charity, exempted from income tax. Those income not just for charity, subject to 10% corporate income tax. So those are normally the implications. Now, next. Aside from this one, exemption, is the, aside from real property tax, is the income tax. Well, of course, income tax is a tax on your privilege to earn income. And the Constitution is clear. <coughs> All revenues of non-stock, non-profit, <coughs> educational institution, which are actually directly exclusively used for educational purposes, are exempted from income tax. Also, charitable institutions, non-stock, non-profit charitable institutions, are not liable to pay income tax. As long as, what's the requirement? That the income will be used for charity and none of the income will be declared as income to the members of that organization. Example, order preacher, <coughs> diba? UST. UST is a non-stock, non-profit educational institution. And UST did not or do not does not declare dividends to the members of the order preachers. So what is the effect? The income of UST, La Salle, Ateneo, University of Asia and Pacific, they are all exempted from corporate income tax. But what's the requirement? They must actually, directly, exclusively use them for educational purposes. 
Sir, how about the rental income of the LSU, UST, to the concessionaire? Di ba? May mga nao pa dyan? Yes. Those rental incomes are also exempted from corporate income tax as long as they can prove <coughs> that they are actually directly, exclusively used for educational. Same sa mga archdiocese. If you can prove that the income is used for religious, that will be exempted from corporate income tax. Normally, the burden of proof falls on the BIR. So if the BIR cannot present evidence that you are using it for private interest, it is exempted from corporate income tax. Even your investment in bank. Normally, if you will a non-stock non-profit educational or charitable institution will invest, example, 1 million excess funds to BDO, example, the interest is 100,000, that will normally be subject to 20% final tax. But since the investor is a non-stock non-profit educational or charitable, you have to submit to the bank your corporate by or not corporate by laws, articles, certificate of registration or articles of incorporation, that bank will no longer withhold 20% final tax. So you have to submit. Because if you will not, the bank will withhold. The 20% of 100,000 is 20,000. That is a huge amount of money. If you will submit your articles, they will not withhold 20%. So example, 10 million. The interest income is 1 million. 20% of 1 million is 200,000. Articles of? Articles of incorporation. Articles of uh, just a copy. And you tell the bank, well, we are an unstuck non-profit, uh, charitable institution. So, uh, please do not withhold 20% final tax. Because if you will not, they automatically withhold it. And they will remit it to BIR. And now you have to file an action for refund before the BIR. And as we all know, the process in the, in the government is very slow. Although you can ask for refund, but the problem is it will go up to the Supreme Court and you know the process you have to ask for petition. Sir, what about schools who use their canteens okay. as uh, a, a way okay. for cooperative of Okay, yeah. that's a different story. Because okay. is the cooperative registered with the Cooperative okay. Development Authority, CDA? If the cooperative is registered with the CDA, that cooperative is also exempted from real property tax also exempted from income tax. And the rental income, assuming paid by the cooperative to the school, will also be exempted from income tax, provided that rental income will be used actually directly exclusively for educational. Iba yung exemption ng cooperative, tsaka ng school. Yung sa school, under the constitution. Yung sa cooperative, under a special law. So that cooperative is exempted from bad income tax, real property tax. But the cooperative is formed by the teacher. No problem as long as the cooperative is registered with Cooperative Development Authority because that is the reason behind establishment of cooperative. As long as the income of the cooperative will inure to the benefit of the members, that cooperative will be exempted from VAT, real property tax, and corporate income tax. That's why most cooperatives are, of course, not lobbying, but praying that the Congress shall not amend the law. Because the Congress, Congress is contemplating of amending cooperative law and subjecting cooperative to 30% corporate income tax. Example, Batelec, Batangas Electric Cooperative. That is a cooperative registered with CDA. That is exempted from payment of corporate income tax. That's why, sabi namin, well, ibenta na lang sa Meralco. <laughs> At least, di ba, properly managed. But kung magkakatax kasi siya, di ba, lala kilalo yung kuryente. But it's up to the Congress. We have to ask the Congress, di ba? What is the compelling reason for you to tax cooperative agreement? Is that the same true with the foundations? Ah, uh, uh, foundation. Foundation as a provision in the National Internal Revenue Code. That foundations are exempted from corporate income tax, provided that the income of that foundation will not be distributed to the founders' members, meaning the income will be used for the purpose of the foundation. The problem sometimes, when it comes to association of <coughs> landowners, condominium unit, landowners, uh, ba? association of subdivision owners, sometimes they will ask uh, membership fee, and the membership fee will be subject to income tax. Why? Because they were not able to prove that the membership fee will be used for 
the maintenance of the common uh, portion of the property. They have to present evidence to be at, well, all fees are collected for purposes of maintenance of the condominium unit and not inured to the benefit of any individual. Same thing with the foundation. That's why SM Foundation is exempted from corporate income tax because they were able, uh, the, the foundation was able to prove that, of course, they no, no portion of the income will inure to the benefit of the founder or members of the organization. But we have to distinguish when it comes to teachers. They have praise and mem uh, example the employees of the organization because the employees themselves are subject to income tax. The organization is the one which is exempt. But the employees of the foundation, the church, the school, definitely they have to pay their uh, na, the withheld compensation income tax. So, say for example, if a church parish organization would like to uh, have extra or extra income or funding for their project. They just have to comply with the documents and submit register it to the CDA. 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 If it's a cooperative. If it is a cooperative. And if they will be able to comply with the requirements for the cooperative. Normally, the cooperative uh, development authority is not strict because it's not intended actually for profit because the cooperative is established for the benefit of the members. That's why we encourage establishment of cooperatives. But we have to pray that the Congress will not change their mind. There's a proposed bill. We yeah. will try. But of course, that's the problem we have to face when we elect uh, senators and Congress or members of the House who will just vote based on their political Happiness. I hope they will consider their their position and just decide on increasing the corporate income tax from 30 to 35 and increase excise tax on motor vehicles so that, of course, the, the those rich persons who have more ability to pay will be the one to, to suffer the burden of paying more taxes. But that's a problem. Individual, you have to pay 32% income tax while corporation will pay 30%. So see the, the irony of our Philippine politics. 32 for individual, 34 corporation. Let's just increase it to 40%. Mayama naman sila, di ba? Walang problema. But of course, members of the Congress are also uh, stockholders of the big corporations. That's why they are there, to block the attempt to increase. Now, next is value-added tax. But, of course, cooperatives, sama ko ng cooperatives, non-stock, non-profit, educational, and charitable institution, when it comes to their say, they are also exempted from value-added tax. So, school, LASAL, LASAL has no value-added tax. It will not impose value. But, only the output, but tuition fee. So, in tuition fee sa LASAL school, UST, Ateneo, there is no bad. But, when LASAL goes to SM, and purchase inventory, it will be subject to VAT because SM will ship it to LaSalle. And LaSalle cannot claim exemption because VAT is tax on the seller. And the seller may ship it to the buyer, like cooperatives. Cooperatives, when you sell goods, you will not be subject to value-added tax. But when you purchase goods from the market or from SM Robinsons, since they are subject to VAT, they will ship the value-added tax to you. And you cannot escape that. So what will you do? You just capitalize the cost of the value-added tax to your inventory and just make it part of your cost of sales in the consideration of the selling price. So if it's 112 pesos, instead of removing but, make your cost of sales 112. So your selling price probably will be 200 instead of 150. Just capitalize the value-added so that's the the good when it comes to non-stock, non-profit, educational, and charitable institution. You are exempted from real property tax, from income tax, and from value-added tax. Now let's go now to uh, goal of financial management. Well, of course, this is the normal problem when it comes to non-profit organization. Now here is our course outline. Of course, introduction to financial management. 
short-term budgeting, responsibility accounting, short-term non-routine, non sorry for them, non-routine decision making, working capital management, capital budgeting, and financial analysis. Hindi ba ito binibigay? Yes. Sa Saudi? Normally. Uh, so. Depende po sa inyo. Depende po sa inyo. Depende po sa inyo. Depende po sa inyo. When it comes to computation, you, know, I mean, you have to write the certain... But I, I'm not asking you to memorize. Your CPAs, your CFOs will be the one to compute it for you. What I will do is for you to understand those formulas because they will just give it to you. And then, this is the cost of capital, this is the interest expense, it's favorable to us, let's just borrow fund from the bank. But sometimes, we cannot... I, I'm not saying you cannot trust your chief financial officer, but... Sometimes, especially purchasing manager, they have connection outside, and that's a problem, you know? Now, uh, let's go to financial management. Well, financial management is an integral part of overall management. Well, it is primarily concerned.